so welcome to uh whoever just joined this movie um none of this was on the calendar exactly a year ago um more so a year ago i had no idea what an nft was i hadn't even i had never even heard of the term nft um i had yet to meet josh i had yet to meet trey uh i vaguely knew annika i had yet to meet jay bauman i had yet to meet sam globin um so all of this together the, the fact that we're now like hanging out together is all a product of one year of uh effort so i just want to start out by remarking that it is set, it's so great to have a whole new group of friends that is kind of a result of uh, us being in lockdowns and us being stuck and now there's a beautiful product i think we need to uh, turn down the uh, volume of the movie a little bit because it's a little bit too loud that's perfect yes bob jenkins in the house what's up bob um so this what you're looking at right now is the south island of new zealand it's just outside of trey ratcliffe's house uh it's overlooking lake wakatipu it is not a green screen i'm actually looking at the lake uh, at, that, at that moment um and it was a uh it was a beautiful morning that started out overcast when i started mixing and then later in the afternoon the sun broke through so the the end of the movie is all bright and sunny and the beginning is uh like beautiful quiet and uh and overcast so i shot most of the footage um in new zealand uh, with help of trey and josh and also shout out to josh's dad who is an acclaimed documentary filmmaker. We'll, we'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, and then after I left New Zealand, which was in April, um, I continued to film in New York City and Greece and other people helped out filming and, and submitted material. So uh, the whole thing is a fantastic group effort. Um, did you see the opening credits? I just noticed I owe an apology, uh, apology to uh, Samantha because it said Sam Glovin, not Samantha Glovin. Oh. I've only seen those opening credits a million times. And... No, no, it's fine. <laughs> it did so this shot, this shot is shot by Trey's drone. This absolutely beautiful house. It's it's the single shot and it zooms in. This house is insane. And I'm on I'm on the top floor and Joshua is behind the piano below me there you go what? What? so um i'm gonna give it to josh because josh this is your track comments this is so this track kind of came out of nowhere <laughs> jesse we jesse and i had hung out at a kind of a little music party and he pulled me aside and asked if I wanted to uh, to write something with him. Like he'd been writing with a couple of my uh, colleagues. And he's like, we'll just see what we can come up with. And so a couple days later, I showed up at the house with all my equipment. And we're actually sitting in the living room. There's a, there's a house actually below this one, um, which is where he, Jesse is DJing on the, the crate backdrop. And we had a piano set up. We had a Prophet synthesizer bunch of guitars and he's just like let's get a chord sequence so we uh we came up with this chord sequence um i must have played it a thousand times over and over again just to get the right beat the right chords the right uh melodic shifts and then jesse uh pulled out this great beat on his computer and it was just preliminary and it was just before Tete was involved. So it was pure, just rhythm and keys. And uh, and then he looked at me, he's like, what if we record this live? Yeah. And, <laughs> and they had just happened to have a piano in the other house. So we tuned it up. I don't think it'd been tuned in like two years. So this guy came and tuned it up. I brought mics, Jesse had mics. Um, we got Trey and my dad to come and record. So I think we had three or four cameras at this point. Not to mention two drones. 
and uh, recorded the whole day. It was quite the experience. So yeah, the piano you hear, none of it's digitalized. It's, it's all raw Yamaha, and it, that house, as you can see, is entirely made out of glass, so the echo was crazy. <laughs> it it was it, really nice to, to create a track with the like what you see Joshua play the piano that that's not playback that's just the actual recording of the track is happening right there yeah, like in yeah. most music in most music videos you record the track somewhere and then you then you make a video and you have to playback right you have to to hand sync <laughs> but this is exactly. actually the recording that you did right there okay so here is the voice of Tete Bero in the background Man, I, I just love this track when you guys sent it to me. I love the five bar figure, like flip me out, like made me swim and yeah, man, I just I just went for it. I went I got crazy and just let loose. And one of the things I love is that it is a live recording. One of the things I love about Jesse when he cuts vocals is he, he wants a vibey vocal. He's not gonna auto tune it or press it to be something else. So it can get weird, it can get emotional get expressive and then uh yeah it was just awesome so thank you for letting me be a cog in the machine yeah it's amazing Tete. as soon as i heard your vocals in this i was like whoa good I, call I, jesse I a, how do you get a voice like that really that like where do you learn how to like wail like that just get in touch with your grief Grief. <laughs> well, forget that's, I asked. That's some great grief. <laughs> well, grief turns to praise eventually, right? That's the that's how it works. They're both sides of the same coin. So. By the way, quickly giving a shout out to uh, Instagram Live. If you're seeing this, go to Twitch. Uh, the link is in my bio. Uh, we're having a fantastic chat and streaming of the movie there right now so go over there don't stay on instagram link is in my bio um i was gonna say something about Tete. oh yeah so tete better was also um doing that magnificent voice on my track um i was gonna say for your consideration uh, uh but um uh tete, what's the name of the track i think it is for your consideration no it's uh oh um, a track from three years ago. Um, your fortune awaits. There you go. Yes, that's that's the one. I knew it. It was just a test, Jesse. <laughs> Ashley Nicole is in the house. What's up? Caterade RL, what's up? Grief turns into praise. That is very true. Um, love it. People are um, coming into this chat. Um, so, we, uh, I created one track at a time, not knowing that there would actually be a collection of nine tracks. Um, and then uh, at the end, I created an order, I, I mixed them all together, and um, I did the video for it. So now uh, the video goes back to the deck and it goes into a track um, that was actually the first track that I made for this collection with the vocals of Martin Luther King. And that track came out on the label Soul Selectas uh, this summer. Um, and uh, that was when I still thought I was gonna license out all of the tracks on the collection uh, before putting out the entire video. And then later on, um, when I met the record shop team, I realized I should change that um, approach and keep them all exclusive. Um, put it out as a pay-per-view and on Record Shop, and then uh, do it live. Go to thescumfrog.com. Wait. Listen to and watch. Wait. What's going on? Who's doing that? <laughs> Who's playing my songs on Spotify right now? I heard the Spotify audio drop. Um, so anyway, this uh, is a track that that does not have a particular music video. It's just me DJing as if it's uh, a live stream. So we'd like to take this time to um, welcome the man of the uh, the man of the house, Obi. What's up, my brother? It's all still working, man. Don't worry about it. 
<laughs> yeah, let me, let, me, let me unmute. I was actually just uh, hitting publish on a blog post that we normally do for drops so I call it what's in the drop or what's in the pack, actually. So and, Obi uh, um, is the, the headmaster of Record Shop. Yep. And um, all of my fans that are in the Twitch chat, if you have questions about what the hell is an NFT, and then I'll, I'll point to Obi because he's really good at uh, <laughs> answering that question. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. All right, awesome. I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, first of all, Jesse, it's been, a, it's been super great getting to know you. I, man, I, 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 I know you from way back. I'll leave it at that. So it was super awesome to meet up and design this campaign of collectibles that just really paid homage to the great work you did with this collection and to the great artists and collaborators that you collected to, to put it together. And uh, I think it presents an awesome value for fans and it gives them a way to appreciate your work in a, in a way that never really been possible before. I could, that's kind of the beauty of this new uh, digital collectibles NFT world that, that we're moving into, right? I definitely want to, I made a note of that. I want to have that be a, a topic of conversation. The term digital collectible versus the term NFT. Uh, when you first explained it to me, Obi, uh, I just took it for granted, but uh, I also just got back from Art Basel in Miami. Um, and and I'm, I, I'm kind of resolved to never use the word NFT again after that week in Miami. So I'd love to hear your, um, your take on that. And also uh, Trey's take on that, like, what journey the term nft has has taken this past year what it meant a year ago and what it means for people right now uh, I, we'll I touch will... on that in a little bit yeah okay yeah don't Go get ahead. me started don't, oh. no, <laughs> don't I, will, me... I will get you started. i will get you i'm just uh, announcing not, now not, not right I'm... not right this second yeah <laughs> um uh quickly uh DMR nine seven six RMD, dude. What can we call? What can we call you? DMR nine seven six RMD. Uh, he's saying what types of drones were used to capture the drone shots, Trey? Oh, I think it was a Mavic Two Pro. Um, all drones are good nowadays. It almost doesn't even matter. Like all cameras are pretty good, uh, and actually, drones are even cheaper than cameras. So I always recommend people to get one and play with it and not even to have any purpose but just to play with it and make some fun photos and videos um, they're all good and you get good at flying them after a few weeks you know crash it <laughs> you got to crash a few until you really get it down um Annika is here what's up Annika was you made it in uh Annika was also at Art Basel uh along with Josh um a really cool coincidence. Uh, Annika and Josh teamed up after this project on one of Annika's uh, performance paintings uh, in uh, or painting performances uh, during Art Basel, where Joshua played piano while Annika was making a painting. That was uh, only a few days ago. <laughs> and you're still on your way back. Oh, yes, I am. I'm actually still in Miami. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. be leaving shortly after this. How was uh, how was Art Basel for you, Annika? It was incredible. I, I got some really beautiful opportunities. Uh, I was scoped. I showed in scoped, and then I was scoped's artist in residence for their partner hotel of Lowe's, where I showed the piece that we created together to your music, and I showed uh, the the film. Um, the music video on a big monitor and the bodysuit. I had about 15 pieces on display in this exhibit. So that was a really special experience. And, and everyone who's now asking. Josh. Mm -hmm. Oh, Josh is fantastic, as we could all see. We haven't seen you in action yet in the video, <laughs> but that's coming up soon. Everyone who's asking themselves, what the hell is Annika talking about a bodysuit? Uh, just stay tuned and all will be revealed. In the house, in the chat is, uh, I just saw Bob Jenkins is here. Bob Jenkins, very renowned uh, video editor uh, out of Los Angeles, who um, edited my Tiny Little Human video last year. Uh, and when he heard that I was doing this project, he very kindly offered his services to, um, to edit a video. And he edited the video that is coming up next with Sam on vocals. 
Um, we're almost. Oh, look, I'm twiddling the knobs. <laughs> so, so I have to say, quick thing about the the DJ setup. It was so funny to me to work in like the most beautiful house on the most expensive piano with drones and like all this super fancy equipment, and then like the travel DJ setup, like the the <laughs> DJ setup that you have in your in your suitcase. Um, I thought it was a really cute touch for for everybody who is always uh, using like five. Uh, CDJ 3000s for a live stream. I'm like, here is my little I'm going camping DJ setup, which was honestly the only DJ setup I had in New Zealand. Um, so there you go. That is the little portable DJ setup. And I tweaked the knobs. And now I'm looking for the next record. So a spoiler alert, if you if you're already thinking, why, how can you possibly mix down this whole set in New Zealand when you only made those tracks way later. Um, that's a total cheat. Uh, I just did a DJ set where I played at 122 beats per minute and knowing that my tracks for this collection would also be 122 beats per minute. And then I just synced up the video from this DJ set with the audio from the new tracks. Uh -huh. So what I'm, what I'm doing here actually has nothing to do with the audio that you hear. It's just pure trickery. There you go. <laughs> I'm such a hack. Okay, so the next uh, the next song, Sam. We want to hear your story. Oh my gosh, my story. Well, I think introduce this... yourself. Hi everyone. <laughs> I'm Sam Globin. Um, and Jesse, I think we just kind of connected because you just sort of were like digging for a voice online that you, you know, that really like resonated with you for this um on, on voices.com yeah voices.com good old voices yeah and um and then you reached out pitched the project and i was like hell yeah this sounds awesome and like nothing i've ever done before totally different from the work that i usually do um yeah and we got to collaborating and recording and you know, doing little touches and tweaking back and forth. Um, and then we went and shot this video. <laughs> well, so, but, so I have to, I have to say that yeah. when we did the tr when we recorded the track, there was not even an idea of a video. We we didn't even know there was oh, a didn't realize that. video. Oh. No, the idea for the video came later, and then I was like, well, might as well have Sam in the video if she's up for it. Yeah. Plan for it. So the first time that Sam and I actually met each other, and she's saying this in the in in the little uh, artist uh, uh, collaborator clip on the previews, uh, the first time we met is in this field that you're seeing right now. You see you see Sam laying in a field, and uh, and the camera guy and I were kind of hovering over her, trying to get the perfect shot, and and we had never met each other. The three of us had never met each other, and we met in this giant open field in the middle of nowhere in upstate New York. And and there was this awkward moment where I totally realized how much of a trooper Sam was because we could have been like the creepiest dudes on the planet. Yeah, I mean, thankfully it all worked out. But no, I mean, we had worked together before. I was like, it, it'll be fine. It's fine. I told friends and family where I was going. It's all good. <laughs> but so, I just remember, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, there's Bob. Bob says, uh, love your performance, Sam. Uh, Bob, you did an amazing job editing Sam together. Well done. So Sam, Sam, tell us a little bit about your uh, your experience shooting a video because this was your first video shoot experience, correct? Yeah. Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was, it was laid back. Uh, it was like, let's just find a perfect spot in the middle of this field. And I just remember like, doing the best I could to listen to the audio while the drone was like hovering above me and it was really loud so I'm like trying to lip sync <laughs> along with this like loud drone coming in and out and that's then, right like, because we didn't have a proper monitor yeah so yeah. we were literally just playing the track on the phone yeah and you had to and, lip sync to the phone yeah but we made it work and the other thing is the sky was like super overcast that day, which is good for shooting outside. But I just remember like 
I was like, Jesse, I'm going to find. <laughs> trying to keep my eyes open, <laughs> looking at the sky. That was funny. But I think we got what we needed. I mean, look how I cool agree. that is. That's awesome. I have to uh, to update my uh, Instagram live um, <laughs> and then talk about the people who are in this video other than you and I. Dude, this, this track is redundant, man. It's quite cool. <clears throat> Okay. Um, so, thank you, bro. Thank you. the The baseline is cool. Yeah, the the baseline was played by me, and then I didn't really like it. And then I asked my friend Luxury to also play it, and then I put his part on top of mine. And so it's like both of us playing bass, like on top of each other. Um, so these are my uh, Facebook and Instagram followers and some of them are my personal friends uh well i guess they're all my personal friends right now um because i had this idea of doing these drone shots of people in fields uh when i listened to this track that was the first visual that came to mind so my first idea for this music video was just a collage of endless people like the shots that you see right now um and I, I put a message on my social media saying, like, if you have a drone and a field, please go out to the field with your drone and, and shoot that of yourself. Uh, so we got a whole bunch of great footage back. And then uh, we did the same thing with Samantha and it all tied in together. So a big shout out to all the people who sent their drone footage, even if it wasn't made in the final cut, if it, even if we couldn't use it in the final cut. Um, thank you so much for your efforts in sending in those drone shots. That was really, really cool. Um, so now I'm going to shut up because Annika has her introduction and it's pre-recorded. Hello. Hello. My name is Annika Rea and I am the creator of Body Medium, which is a performance piece where I utilize my body as a paintbrush, the motions, the strokes, and the canvas as my stage. I collaborated with the Scum Frog on this music video where I created a painting in real time to his piece of music. And in that collaboration, we came out with a, an incredible music video and a very powerful painting. And we call it Lifeblood. So this is by far the most, uh, the, the biggest effort video of the entire movie. Uh, Annika, I'm going to let you do the, the first half of talking about it. Okay, so <clears throat> over over quarantine, um, I really dove into my craft as a performance painter, and um, Jesse and I were communicating, and we threw it out there. We're like, "Oh, let's collaborate," <laughs> and and so we ended up with this film. We ended up uh, working with some incredible, an incredible team with an incredible amount of equipment and we created something really beautiful. We worked from the beginning, really uh, taking Jesse's vision of this, this um, rolling black on black where you don't quite know what's happening. And then I created kind of a metaphorical story with color um, that unravels throughout the video. And I, this was actually the first dance painting typically I work in flow and I just imprint the moment but this particular painting which was really fun for me because I have I do have a background in choreography um, but typically my work is kind of anti choreography but it was it was such an incredible experience for me to you just dropped Annika just dropped out or dropped off oh there's is she back? We'll, we'll wait for her to get back. Um, or she's back. One, two. You dropped out for a second, Annika. Sorry. For a second. And I'm not sure if I lost it. Did I drop out? 
what did yeah, I what we I missed the last, the, last, the last minute that you were talking we, we lost you we missed okay. the last minute um, okay so, so um, I think I, I imagine that it was a metaphorical story we can barely hear, we can barely hear you using Annika. color to uh, create this premise and I worked with uh, incredible. Let me bring it closer here. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah? No. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, so it was it was really incredible um, seeing my work on the camera that's called the Phantom, which shoots at 938 frames per second, uh, and so the paint looks like whips, and so I got to see my work. In a different, in a in a different way to really. Um, yeah, you work with paint every day, but you've never see seen paint, paint can like be this. Manipulated uh, with my look hands. Look at that! Look at that! Look at that! Air. I I think we lost Annika. Annika is in a hotel lobby in in Miami. So though you're, you're back. Um, did we also lose Ryan? Because that's Ryan playing the trumpet right there. Um, I don't know where Ryan is. Um, but just so you know, Ryan was in this chat before. <laughs> hey, bro, I know you can only, you have a limited number, so I'm going to jump that, out and leave some space for Ryan. But thanks again for having me on. Blessings, everyone. And I'm going to keep watching the film. Thank you, Tete. Thank you. We'll, we'll chat later. Let's see if we can get Ryan back in here. Thank you very much, the Ray, the Ray One. Um, I think someone had asked where this painting was. Annika, did you want to let them know? Right, where's the where's the painting now? No, Annika's reception is shoddy. There's uh, a question. I, um, I think the painting is in Annika's car at the moment. <laughs> that is not the sexiest answer um, because it was in <laughs> The in painting its... was just shown. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, here comes the facial. How many, t how many takes were required of this? Um, so the we did one so so Annika choreographed the entire song and basically did her choreography for the full duration of the song live in real time on on a Friday we shot an entire weekend in upstate New York in a barn and so on Friday she did that and then after the shot after the sh we shot that we looked at every single one of her movements and then on Saturday we just took one movement at the time to say, like, okay, this movement what you did there was really cool. Let's shoot that in high resolution in slow motion. So during Saturday, we basically did all the all the one take shots. Um, on Friday, we did the full choreography, and on Saturday, we did the uh, the more sophisticated shot. I would say. What was the size of the crew that? Uh that goes into making something like this. I mean, it looks so professional. Um, I say there were maybe eight people, not not counting the catering and the the parking attendants and the massage therapist. There were probably like four lighting, <laughs> four lighting people and uh, three camera people and a and a rigger. Is that right, Annika? Do I remember that correctly? Annika is just can't hear us, or we can't hear her. Um, I was thinking this, 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 the, the call, and all of us here kind of in the quasi Zoom cause like so kind of. It it's it's an absolutely stunning video, beginning to the end. Um, it's too bad that Annika got interrupted by crappy Wi-Fi, but. Um, 
We're in the we're in the new song already. We're in the song with Maestro Jay Bauman. Um, I got to introduce Jay real quick and then I'll let him talk. Uh, Jay and I met uh, here in the Bahamas, uh, where I am right now. Uh, Jay came with a bunch of friends, um, and we had never met. Uh, he was with, with, with some uh, mutual friends of ours, and uh, we had a jam session at my house, which is so fun, um, with uh, Kelly, the violinist, and bunch of people banging on drums and uh and we decided to stay in touch and uh work on a track and this is the result so jay your thoughts uh my thoughts is hey it's a good day to be here can, i like can, that thought. can y'all hear me okay i hear you great oh perfect yeah man it was really a blast getting to do this. It was completely unexpected, which is usually how most of the time good shit usually happens. <laughs> you just sit around trying to plan shit all the time, and you get these great little things just pop in like, wow, this just happened. But it was really fun getting to do it, that's for sure. Kind of, I love how it just kind of came out of nowhere with... It was a great jam, and then we just got to talking, and it just so happened about what you were kind of getting into was kind of on the same tip of what I've been into these as of late at the time. So it just kind of worked out perfect. I think so too, and I think that uh, like visually, it's a really cool approximation of how the collaboration worked in terms of music as well, because this video looks like you're in the trees and I'm on the beach. But yeah. I, yeah. which is true, yeah. you are in the trees and I'm on the beach. But you're in yeah. the trees in LA, and I'm the I'm on the beach in New Zealand. And and that's kind of what, what the musical collaboration was about too. Like you were you were the lead. I have to say you're the lead guitarist for uh, uh, Michael Franti and Spearhead, uh, and you do on average a completely different type of jam than this type of yeah. music. Yeah. Uh, but but you have a real feel for electronic music and you, you have a real background in electronic music and a love for electronic music. So even though we're worlds apart sonically, like this was a no brainer to to just whip this up. And it really looks like you're right in the trees. And we're just yeah, like literally, literally in the trees. Yeah, literally in the trees right out here at Griffin Park. If uh, let's see if if Coney is here yet. If he's not, oh no, uh, the next track is not Coney. The next track is uh, Summer Breeze. Uh, so I think this is a really good time to ask my dreaded NFT question to Obi. Um, and I'll introduce I'll introduce the question from my point of view. Um, I learned about NFTs in the way most people learned about NFTs through news reports that people had paid millions of dollars for the screenshot of a tweet. That's how I was introduced to NFTs. So my knee-jerk reaction was, well, that sucks, that's stupid, who would do that? Um, and then fortunately, my friend Trey, who is below me in the chat, <laughs> he, uh, he immediately managed to put some perspective on that and to say like, no, it actually has a lot of potential you have to see it as pokemon cards or baseball cards uh and um this hype is going to go away but then the technology will stay and that stuck with me and when i started to talk to record shop about this collaboration what really stuck with me is that obi said exactly the same thing that trey said like we're not going for this hype thing we're not going for the like the crazy auction thing where people are getting millions of dollars we're going for the technology behind this and, and behind the the nfts and, and what we can actually accomplish by that uh now just coming back from miami everybody's talking about nfts and and maybe one in ten people who talks about nfts knows what it actually means and and, and what it can do so it's kind of giving nfts a bad name to the point that when I post about NFTs now, I already have a lot of followers who are like, oh, you're doing that douchey NFT thing? As if I'm wearing like a Von Dutch shirt a year too late. <laughs> um, so, uh, Obi, your thoughts on the term NFTs versus the usefulness of it? We don't, we don't like NFTs at, at Record Shop. We don't like the, the current NFT zeitgeist. 
Uh, we don't necessarily like like all the you know profile picture stuff and the uh, the board apes and the mutant board apes and the mutant board ape housewives and the mutant board ape housewives in space and the mutant board ape housewives in space with uh, you know terrible glitter people. with glitter. The glitter. <laughs> it's all deri- derivative, derivative bullshit, and uh, a lot of us are record shop, our musicians. I, I mean, myself, I'm a producer and a DJ. I, I don't go into the studio and make NFTs. I go into the studio and make awesome music. And so, you know, that's what I try to do. So you try to do. That's what we all try to do here. Uh, NFT is not a. Um, it's not anything more than the uh, the holographic label of authenticity on your wine bottle or on your pack of Pokemon cards or whatever. Like it's the thing that says that you have a limited edition item. It's the one out of five hundred on the print, not the print itself. And I think a lot of people get that confused. And I think you're absolutely right. The main, mainstream audience. Well. Forget about the mainstream audience for a second. Even within NFT circles, people don't know what the hell they're talking about a lot of the time. Outside of that, mainstream audience, music fans, they don't know what's going on. However, if we're talking about building the next five to ten years of where the music industry is going, what can produce value for, for artists, what can create value for the artist fan relationship, there's nothing there's nothing wrong with NFT, using NFTs as a, as a foundational technology. But I think NFT is going to go the way of HTML, HTTP, WWW, SQL, you know, that, that like, it's a technology. It's like extremely nerdy and cringy right now to be in NFTs. And it's going to get even worse over time because it's going to get seriously unfold. So you won't see anything about NFTs on recordshop.com itself. Um, if you dig deep, you can find records to the transactions on the full blockchain, but that's about it. You know, so like you you choose to, to you choose to use the name the, the term digital collectible instead of the term NFT. Oh hell yeah! Like to us, it's the next format, right? Like it's just like vinyl, cassettes, CD, MP3. Like to us, a digital collectible is like kind of the conclusion of that of that lifeline. It's a multimedia bundle until. Who knows what else comes next? I mean, I think it's super. Uh, Trey, uh, can you? Uh, uh, by the way, Lisa, if you can hear this, can you turn down the volume of the track a little bit um, of the of the movie? Uh, yeah, that's that's better, by the way. Um, Trey, can you jump in on that? Like, what is your um, what is your interpretation of the term NFT now versus a year ago? Yeah, I, I agree with what he just said. Uh, NFT is definitely getting in the zeitgeist, and it's such an esoteric term. Uh, and I know we all know what NFTs are, and with the Art Basel and NFTs all over the place, like enough already. But honestly, I think only three percent of the planet, maybe two percent, maybe one percent, even knows what an NFT is. <laughs> yeah. And then when someone asks you, like, what what is an NFT? I'm pretty good at explaining it now. But he's right; it's just a digital collectible. Um, and whatever term you put on it, um, and that struck me what you, you said, Jesse, because I get a lot of comments like that too. If you're selling out the NFTs or blah, blah, blah. But I'm like, come on, what, what is wrong with an artist having a creation that sells directly to the person that wants it? We're taking out the middleman. Why are they saying like, oh, you should use the old system where there's a bunch of middlemen that take all the money. How dare you sell directly to the consumer? It, it's just they don't get it. Right. And I think that harkens back to the, the functionality of the technology rather than the crazy hype auction stories that we see on in our, you know, in our news stories. Right. I, I agree. Um, but the, the big stories, the big auctions, they do make major news and it is starting to popularize this idea. It's a new way for... Um, creators to connect with their fans and yeah maybe, maybe there's a, a go-between that, that helps you make it all happen but it's just a, it's a totally different idea that it takes a lot of people for their time for their heads to get around so as we hear more and more of these nfts and as celebrities get into it and, 
and uh, all this stuff. It, it's I think it's just beginning. I think this hype cycle could probably last a couple years, but the technology will be there to stay, and um, and people people will slowly start to move their their lives into the blockchain, not just with NFTs but DeFi. You know, they're going to start putting their finances on there because. The blockchain banks are so much better than the real world banks. Um, it's just, it's sort of the beginning. It's a way to get people into the blockchain thing because it's a, it's a either visual or audio, in your case, both thing that people can understand. Otherwise, like crypto coins and other stuff is so esoteric. Uh, if people can see it and touch it and hear it, they're like, oh, okay, I, I want some of that in my life. And if it's yours, um, it just kind of feels good. Like you have this thing and it has value. You can enjoy it. And then of course you can resell it later on. Um, and the artist gets, you know, whatever, 10% of the original thing. That kind of, I've been doing fine art for a while and I have collectors, but then when they resell my work, I don't get any of that. So this is just, it's the best thing for creators in the world. I know all of us are creators. And uh, it's a little bit of a scary time because we're not sure exactly what's happening, but uh, the trend lines are clear. Thank you, Trey. Thank you. If, yeah, I want to give, yeah. give a shout out if you, if you let me to uh, Dog One Seventy Seven in the in the Discord chat. He's a he's yeah. a faithful record shop player. He said he sees um, artist sets on record shop like the one that we're dropping now as the albums of the future. I think there's a lot of truth to that. Oh. I personally see them more as like the album box sets, you know, the future sort of thing. But I think there's a strong parallel there. Absolutely. Like, and it was so educational for me, um, working in these weeks, in these past two weeks with your team, Obi, um, because I learned how NFTs are made, what would work, what doesn't work. Um, and, and to see the whole thing come together is just fantastic. And by the way, like we were supposed to hype the drop all the entire hour. We haven't hyped it once. Uh, Obi, can we can we hype it? Is it safe to hype it? Yeah, of course it's safe to hype it. Okay, so it's it's gonna drop in 20 minutes or 20, 23 minutes. Um, by the way, the last video that you saw was the song Summer Breeze uh, with my own vocals. And this, this is what you're seeing right now is a song, A Tiny Little Human, in a remix by Coney. And Coney is a fantastic Italian producer and DJ who's supposed to be in the chat right now. Um, I don't know what's going on, uh, but I don't see him. Uh, but uh, yeah, so if you um, are interested in this sound, go find Coney. And he has two very sophisticated dots on the O. So it's Coney really but he's got a phenomenal sound um he reached out to me he said do you mind if i remix tiny little human uh for those who who don't know tiny little human was uh, a big record for me last year uh video made with lego figures as you can see uh put together by bob jankis he's in the chat um shout out to bob uh and coney remixed the song and then uh i decided in the summer uh to just do a new music video of it or like remix the music video uh we were in greece josh was with us um and we we were on a boat and we saw this tiny church in the middle of nowhere and i had this outlandish robe uh so we just trekked out to the church with with um my girlfriend joanne and her son alex and josh's dad uh, and they were all kind of like shooting me with their iPhones and, and cameras. Uh, and then I edited it together to, to look like uh, some weird 90s rap video, really. Um, so that's the remix of Tiny Little Human. There it is. Um, it's, this wasn't planned either, Jesse, was it? No, it was not this planned at all. At all. <laughs> no, we were, we were on a boat and uh, we were kind of kicked out of a bay where it was too busy. And we're like, let's go to this to this place where there is nobody around uh, to have some privacy. And so we went to this bay where there was nobody around. And, it, and then I saw this church. It's like, let's let's go out to this church and then let's why don't we shoot some video? So that's uh, that's how we shot it. So cool. It was funny. I wish that Coney was here because he made the track. 
And it was so cool because I remember that from the beginning of my career that I used to reach out to to artists, ask them, asking them to to remix a song. Uh, and sometimes that that worked out really well for me. So uh, he reached out to me, he said, can I remix it? And I send him the vocals and he made this really, really cool remix. So um, I wanted to give him a public shout out, but now I'll just give him a shout out uh, in this way. In case you're trying to get in or you can't get in, but you're watching this, Kony, love this remix. Thank you. Yeah. This is shot by your dad, Josh. Hey Jesse, someone someone said that that robe blends perfectly into a landscape. Did you find that? It's almost like camouflage. Uh, it does, uh, it, and it was and it's totally coincidence. It is absolute coincidence. Um, it was just like my girlfriend said. Well, if you're gonna video something in front of that church, you should wear something else than your old T-shirt. And I had to agree with her. And she had that robe, and and there you go. It's eternalized. By the way, the, the, uh, I have to give a shout out to the designer of the rope. Her name is Camilla. She makes fantastic robes, uh, mostly for women. But if you're in the mood, it feels really good on your skin, dudes. It really does. <laughs> Obi, I want to see you in one of those robes. Uh, if you had been on the playa a few years ago, you would have seen me in one of those robes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So... Um, yeah, speaking of the playa, uh, to uh, to answer the question, why do you not go back to Burning Man? Um, I'm not religiously not going back to Burning Man, um, but I am going back to Burning Man when there's a good reason for me to go back to Burning Man. And um, I am not... Um, I'm not downplaying the magic of playing at Burning Man because DJing at Burning Man, especially for Sunrise, is the most unbelievable experience there is. However... When you do it many, many years in a row, which in, in my case, I did it six years in a row, uh, Sunrise at Robert Hart, um, then it, it, there is a kind of a grind that starts to develop, um, a kind of a rhythm that starts to develop. And, and I think that that is wrong for Burning Man. And I think that a, a uh, lot. <laughs> What's that? Sorry? A, commod a commodification, perhaps. A commod yeah, no, that's, that's exactly right. And I, I think that Burning Man should be a stage for people who are truly in the awe of it all. And I personally went to Burning Man 13 times. And after 13 times, you've you've seen uh, so much. <laughs> yeah, you're awed out. And you've seen so much of the magic behind the curtain that there is not much magic left because you already know how everything works. Like the first time you step into the playa at Burning Man, you first burn, you're like, holy shit, how does this exist? How does this work? Where have I been? Like whatever you know you rethink your life and all that stuff and then gradually as, as as you progress through the culture of burning man you find out how everything works you find out how every, who, who everybody is and then and it becomes a formula and in the beginning it's really good that it becomes a formula because you can kind of manipulate things in your favor because you know the formula but then when you when you've used the formula for years and years and years then it kind of it kind of feels like you're cheating because the best moments are created by artists who are in that awe, in that genuine awe of like, holy shit, is this real? And they're and they're they're told to make their art in that state of mind. And when you don't have that state of mind, when you're just like, oh yeah, it's a five thirty nine a.m. The sun is going to come up in two minutes, and I'm going to hit play. Um, and I'm not down again. I'm not downplaying it because every time I do it, it's amazing. But I, I feel that 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 moment should be reserved for for artists who who are in that awe, who who are in that genuine awe, rather than like, oh yeah, I'm I'm the wallpaper here. Um, <laughs> so I will go back to Burning Man, uh, but I'm going to back. I'm going back to Burning Man when there is something new that I feel that I want to do artistically that I cannot do anywhere else, but I, I can do it in a giant place in the desert. Then I'll go back to Burning Man. So I'll go back to Burning Man when I have a purpose. Uh, so that's that's the answer of uh, me not going to um, Burning Man. Uh, and, I, and then Dave, I see you say badass remix. So, so this is a remix of uh, Gabriel Applin 
um, that I made uh, a few years ago, and she was very kind. So this is a really good example of me approaching an artist and saying, I want to make a remix of this. Uh, I approached her and I said, let me remix this record. She was cool with that. Um, and uh, then I told her I was going to put it out. And I made it a few years ago. I had never done anything with it. But um, all of a sudden, last year, a lot of DJs started asking me for a copy of the track. So there was clearly something going on with it. So I figured, let's um, master it properly and make it part of the, uh, part of the collection. Uh, here we go. The title's Gabrielle Applin, Run for Cover. Um, and uh, so she allowed me to put it in the collection, which was great. And of course, I wanted her to be a prominent part of the collection, but she didn't really want to do that because she felt that because for her, this song was so long ago, like she wrote this song four years ago, uh, that she didn't feel that she wanted this song to represent her, her career at this point, uh, which I totally understood. So I was allowed to use it, um, but uh, she didn't want to be part of this wonderful bunch. But if she's look, if she's watching now, I'm sure she regrets that because you guys are so awesome that like I'm sure she wants to be part of this. So you're missing out, Gabrielle. But I love you and thank you for letting me use the track. It's such a great track. Drop countdown. Fifteen minutes to drop. Hey, tell us about this location. Um, the location. So the location is the South Island of New Zealand. Um, it is shot just outside of Queenstown, New Zealand. Uh, the lake you see in the background is Lake Wakatipu. Uh, that's not this. This is just a little. That here, here we go. This is Lake Wakatipu, and the house where I recorded it uh, has a beautiful sunset deck where we did some fantastic uh, Sunday jam sessions every Sunday. Uh, Josh was part of that, and Trey came out for that as well. It was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, so that's not a green screen. That is actually Lake Wakatipu in, uh, in New Zealand. For my New Zealand friends who are watching, I miss it. I truly miss it. I, I wish we were going back this, this summer, but I don't think it's in do, cards. Do you go to New Zealand a lot? Yes, because my other half, Joanne, is from New Zealand. Um, and uh, so she is a born and raised Kiwi. And um, we go every year. But this year, it's just, it's it's very difficult to go with uh, the COVID restrictions. And, and uh, hopefully the restrictions will be lifted in April that people can just go and self-quarantine. Um, but, oh, Coney is here. Yes. Tony is in the house. Um, Guys, hello everybody. Nice to meet you. It was hard, but here I am. So it's a big pleasure, great pleasure. So thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for Hope joining us. Uh, you just missed your moment, but we gave you a public shout out. Um, I was uh, talking about how great it is for artists to um, just contact other artists and say like, hey, I want to remix your song and, and run with it. And how two of those songs are back to back in this collection. First, you approached me to remix Tiny Little Human. And then I approached Gabrielle Applin to remix Run For Cover. And uh, everybody said yes to each other. So that, that's beautiful. But tell me, what, what made you want to remix Tiny Little Human, Kony? Well, so first of all, um... I, I, I'm not very good to talk in English, so sorry if if You're uh, great. somebody of you totally don't understand. understand very well. I'm sorry. And um, we hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me? Very good. Yep. Great. So uh, for me, you're a legend, and um, I, I I know you since many many years. I'm not so young, but I'm not so old. Also, so here in Italy, you are kind of legend you know for house music and everything like that but i'm a kind of guy that i'm not scared to to write you know an empathic message you know something like easy going i'm not saying that he's a legend so uh, it will I, I will be scared to, to to send him a message or something like that so what's happened i i i heard this song and i was just like traveling with my mind and i said oh my gosh it's 
I, I don't remember the last time when, when I heard a kind of songs that I, I had this kind of feeling. I don't know if, if I'm uh, clear or not. And, um, and after that, uh, it was for me something like, I didn't think too much. I just said, you know what? Okay, let's find him. Where is him on Instagram? Or I don't know. I want to send it to Jesse a message and I will do it. If he doesn't reply, no problem. It's, it's fine. I will be happy to play the original one. But in that moment, I, I told you, look, I want to make a great remix and I have a great idea about that. But the thing is, I didn't have any idea about that. How to make? <laughs> oh, we've been we've been so honest all hour long. Like I've I've already uh, spilled so many secrets about this video. Uh, I I love that you're saying this. That's awesome. No, no, no ideas. But when you said to me, "Look, brother. Okay, let's see. Okay, nice to meet you. I'm gonna send you in a few days." I was like, "Oh, oh, come on." He, he replied to me, you know what, and okay, okay, you know what, I was thinking, thinking, now I have the stuff, what I can do now. So I, I took my laptop, started to listen how, a thousand, thousand of songs in one hour, thinking, bah, 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 bah. I said, but this is a great poetry, how can I improve this one, it's impossible. And after that, you know, it's, it's, it's all about to be professional, and after that, after I saw, I have seen you like a normal person, like like legend, but like not anymore like legend. I wanted to be professional, like as as I think I am, maybe. And uh, I was into this kind of things. You know, this is my job. It's been almost ten years that I'm doing this job. I'm not scared. You know, a new projects or anything. And I said, okay, let's see. And in one day, I started, you know, with my paper, writing the intro, how to make the build up, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. Here I am. So I'm fantastic. I don't know. To say happy is nothing. That's it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very happy that you're part of this collective and, uh, and, and part of this collection. Uh, and thank you for dropping by and telling your story. It, it, it's, it's really amazing. And uh, the remix will have a very long life. I know that because there's interesting stuff happening. Uh, first of all, of course, the NFT drop, which is in uh, eight minutes from now. Um, go get your hands on those packs uh, on Record Shop. Uh, and, and right now we're in the final track of the collection, uh, Truth and Gravity, which I made it to a shirt. Wow. <laughs> um, they're, they're uh, link in bio, you can buy them. Uh, Trey, you got yours coming to them already. Um, but I want Trey to explain because Trey made this visual and he makes these visuals on a regular basis for um, different artists and different collaborations. Uh, they are called fractals, fractals. And um, they have something to do with AI and, and, and elaborate computer programs, but uh, I'll, I'll let Trey explain. Trey, what is a fractal and what makes this fractal different from all your others? Yeah, congrats on the NFT drop, by the way. I'm gonna go buy a bunch after this, <laughs> if there's any more. Um, so a fractal is basically one of the fundamental building blocks of the universe and if you've ever looked at like a conch shell or like look closely at broccoli, you see patterns that repeat themselves. We kind of take this for granted. And like some of the most beautiful fractals evolve in something called a Fibonacci sequence um, with this sort of the beautiful ratio. So I've always been fascinated by this collision of um, consciousness and, and the mind and reality. And a lot of this comes from like crazy psychedelic trips I've done. Acid, <laughs> mushrooms. More honesty. More honesty in the show. I like it. honesty. Yeah. <laughs> the DMT. I mean, I've done ayahuasca, crazy things. And so when you go to the other side, you see such beautiful patterns. And it just makes you cry. It's just full of so much love. And then so during the first lockdown, I was stuck here in New Zealand, which is not a bad place to be stuck. And like, instead of just being like lonely and sullen, I was like, I need to create 
a visual meditation for myself, a sort of a therapeutic thing for myself. So I got really into this crazy mathematical program. My background is computer science and math, even though I've been an artist for the last 15 years. So I kind of tried to combine these two hats, uh, art and math, and kind of came up with this stuff. And I've made about, I made about a hundred of them now, and we put them under the brand name Machine Elf. Um, so you could always go to YouTube to see more of them. This one you should. that, thanks. Uh, this one that I made for Jesse is, you know, quite uh, polygonal with hard edges because um, I felt like this this song has this kind of like crusty, crystalline kind of structure to it. And so that really fed into this. Uh, so step one is creating the fractal, which takes a long time. And then what I do afterwards is I take Jesse's music in this case, and I plug it into this program, and that becomes one of the inputs for how the fractal evolves. Um, in this case, I used his music as part of the color palette. So as you hear the music go up and down in the waveforms, the whole fractal colors will change and the shape will change a little bit, so it feels like it's an integrated whole. Um, yes. Well, first, yeah. first of all, so, what I have to say, first of all, what I have to say about that is that, thank you for saying "crusty crystalline," because that's going to definitely be the the name of my new track, "crusty crystalline." <laughs> um, and also, so tell us a little bit. Um, how much about this process is automated, done by an algorithm, and how much is this you steering and animating it by hand? So you begin with a an existing fractal equation. Um, people have been creating fractal equations, I think, since the 50s or 60s. You know, Germans and Russians and stuff. So these are basically long mathematical formulas that look like computer programs. And so I there's probably 200 that have been created. So I might take one from some German mathematician and combine it with one from a Russian mathematician, and you get a totally new fractal. And you never know what it's going to be. Sometimes it looks like trash, but every now and then you get something like this is this is interesting. So then once you have that, then you you kind of position the camera. You can change. There's so many different um, uh, coefficients you can change, like from the Z scale to the Y scale to other Mandelbrot settings. It's quite esoteric. I won't get into it. But as you start to play with these sliders. Which I don't really know how to make music, but I see you guys play with sliders and stuff. It's the same kind of thing. You just play with sliders until it sounds good, or in my case, I play with sliders until it looks good. And so basically, I I, I make a keyframe, like frame one, and then I, I bend it around and I move the camera and I change the shape and I make that the next keyframe, and there might be 10 seconds in between. And then so the, the computer, will um, extrapolate 30 frames per second from keyframe one to keyframe two, and then that's 10 seconds done. And then you have to do 10, you can do whatever interval you want. I like to do 10 seconds because base 10 and stuff. And then you do keyframe two and keyframe three, and then I'm like, I'm into this. I'm like, God dang, Jesse, this song is super long. I gotta keep making keyframes. <laughs> and I gotta come up with a story, a story that takes you from the beginning to the end. And I'm not always sure where the end is gonna be. And I really kind of let the music lead me. And in this case, it was an easy journey because of Jesse's musical style. I think if there's one theme of this broadcast, of this chat, is that everybody in this collective had no idea what they were gonna do when they started. I think that's what we all have in common. From from Coney to Trey to Jay to Samantha, w w none of us had any idea what we we're doing until we were actually doing it. That's a pretty beautiful thing, and that includes the NFT because I had no idea what an NFT was a year ago. It's almost almost game time, by the way. It's almost drop time. It's one minute to drop time. This is, a, this is our smallest drop ever, truth. This is true. Fact. This is our smallest drop ever. These are going to be very, very limited edition cards. They're probably going to be very, very valuable. And they're probably going to sell out very quickly. So if you 
are on this call and you want to get some of those packs, you should probably multitask a little bit. Good. Um, so do that. Also, Trey, um, if there's one place where you would say to send people to find out more about your work, because I also want people to know about your AI Vitar project, where can they find out the most about you in one single URL? Probably treyratcliffe.com. That's got links to all of my irons in the fire. And those are only links to the successful ones. I'm not going to link to all the failures. Good. Samantha, are you still with us? You're, you're muted. If, uh, if people want to check you out, where do they go? Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Sam Glovin and www.samanthaglovin.com. <laughs> Thank you very much. Jay Bauman. Yo. If people want to if, if people want to check you out other than coming to uh, Michael Franti Sparehead show like where do they check you out uh, you can uh, always find me in that great little cyberspace of Instagram Jay Bowman 72 Jay Bowman 72 we won't give it away Annika <laughs> if people want to know more about your unbelievable performance art there you are in the credits where do they go I can't hear you. You're probably muted. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, we're lip syncing. <laughs> we're lip syncing. She says, go to my website, AnnikaRay.com. That's you what go. she's saying, really. Like, <laughs> Josh, your, your point of contact. My point of contact is Instagram, Joshua Ryan Composer, and uh, my website, JoshuaRyanComposer.com. And if you guys want to hear our music, it's on it's at Sash S A Y S H on Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere. Mm. Thank you. And Coney, people want to check out your sound. There you are in the credits, right there. Cool, cool. Thank you where so much. Do we, where do they go to check you out? Uh, I think first of all, I think is the best place would be SoundCloud, and um, and after that, Spotify. Easy, easy going. So it's K O N I, but it's the German O. So it's written like with the umlaut. Ha, ha, the how, two dots. how do you say that in English? Yeah, I think it's umlaut. Yeah, right. Umlaut, right? A... Kearney. Yeah. But Kearney. so it's not hard to write, you know, on the normal uh, tape pad. How do you say that? But K O N I with the two dots on the O. Exactly, exactly, Jesse. So thank um, you so much. Thank you guys for being here. Everybody who saw the video and wants to see the full thing in all his glory without all this uh, chatter on top of it, go to thescumfrog.com. Obi, Beautiful. last words? Hey, man, thanks for having me in here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like in awe of the talent around me here uh, and humbled. So thanks, Jesse, for making us part of your life lately. It's, it's been uh, super cool. I smell a sellout really, really quickly. So uh, this is all great news. Uh, yeah, we're half done. My CTO says we're half done. Uh, so um, yeah, I mean, thank you so much. Um, it's great material. I think it's going to have tremendous collectible value. I think we'll do this again. Uh, we have some great ideas for for set completion rewards uh, that we're going to announce pretty soon, and. Um, it looks like the AWS outage is not biting us quite yet, so uh, you got some good universal uh, juju shining down on us Fantastic. right now. That's a good job. <laughs> Fantastic. I want to thank everybody who is in the chat. Bob Jenkins, thank you very much. Dave, thank you for coming out. Uh, all of you, thank you so much. Um, I hope you liked it. And once again, if you want to see the entire thing, Go to thiscomfrog.com and pick your level of involvement. You can watch it for $2 one time uh, during 72 hours. You can watch it for $20 unlimited. Show it to all your friends however many times you want uh, or sign up to my Patreon page. You can find all that information on thiscomfrog.com. Um, I'm going to give it to Lisa because she is our official host for this hour. And uh, she can talk us out. Sweet. I was actually thinking maybe we want to take a peek at the pack contents. What what is in the drop? I know we we 
listed out what's actually come out, but maybe I'll share my screen and we can actually talk about what we saw and what uh, is I actually would love that. Yeah. Be. Are we allowed to do that? Yeah. I still don't know what's like what's supposed to be a mystery. I just and I just ripped right. a I just sorry I just bought a pack. I'll I would happily rip it open too so we could all see what's Damn. in there. And I know it's, no, it's a little small on my screen, Do but it. here let's let's uh, I'll try to zoom in a bit. So Andrew does all of our fantastic uh, medium posts to talk about what's in the drop. So here we've got our scum frog drop. So our pack details, uh, I'm sure everybody here has already seen it because they bought it. Um, we've got our 1,000 packs, $12 each with the one-minute cooldown. So each pack has four collectibles. That's one artist card, one release track. By the way, we're sold out. Five, five minutes. Congratulations. Ah, woo, woo! Congratulations. Nice. I, I don't okay. know what that means, but it, it's great. <laughs> All your thousand, thousand, your thousand more packs it. are gone. <laughs> Did you all just applaud me for being a sellout? Is that what happened? Uh, I think it's a good, this is a good time to be a sellout, I think. All right, good. I'll take it. <laughs> all right. So, so let's, let's see some of those beautiful things because it was such a, a, a pleasure to work with the entire team in putting this together. And I saw exactly how much effort went into it because... In the beginning, um, I thought I was going to do all the work because I'm cutting them up. I'm cutting up the the movie into the 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 NFT moments, and then I'm cutting up the uh, cutting up the records and the and the, the audio. So my first impression was like really self centered, of like, oh guys, I'm doing all the work. So then I put it in one giant zip file and I sent it over, and then I saw what the record shop team actually did with all the content. And they truly took it to the next level. And it was so beautiful to see. And it was, the whole collection is just so coherent and so beautiful. And, and it, it has a, it has a beautiful theme to it. And uh, something that I could truly never imagine. It's, it's really like giving it to somebody and then, and, and then they take it to the next level. It was really beautiful. Uh, I might be inviting. Is he gonna rip a pack, Lisa? I think we're all in suspense. Yeah, hey, you've yeah. been teasing us, Lisa. Yeah. Let us let us see some some of the stuff. Let me get my uh, screen shared again. Yeah, I'm totally down to rip it. Oh, so from our record shop homepage. Whoop! Let me actually let it load first. Hop over to my collection. That's into my packs. Serial you know, six fifty. I always like when a number is like nice and round like that. So six fifty out of a thousand. So, I'm assuming so, th Jesse, so this is this is a pack that you personally purchased. Yeah, I personally purchased it. I have a quite a nice collection. I'm uh, a fairly recent. Um, add to the record shop team. So I have a nice collection that I had. I've been a user since day one. So I've been I've been busy um, talking this entire time. I've not purchased any pack. So if I want to buy something in the marketplace, I'm just going to buy it from you. So, so <laughs> don't put it for resale for like ten thousand dollars, please. Well, we'll see what I get. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, Ryan. It's, it's Ryan. Oh, we lost Ryan, though, but I did see him. Ryan has but been trying to come back in. Uh, you know, we've got we've reached our limit. We'd have to kick somebody else out. You know, I have to go myself. All right. Who said that? Help. That Jay was Bowman. me, buddy. It's Jay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Jay, All right. I, I love you. Let's uh, let's uh, you, do it. Let's do a greatest hits album together. Absolutely, bro. Let's go. Let's hit the road. Let's do it. We'll buy a van it's great and we'll to see write everybody. some greatest hits. It was hits. a pleasure doing this. Thank you, Jay. Love you. Love y'all. Take care, man. All right. So let uh, can you let um, Ryan know that he can come back on and I'll open up this card again when he joins. Uh, yes. Um, I will. Oh, he should, same link should work for him. All right, next one. 
But if not, lifeblood. So those, that's a card with two different tracks on it, right? That's like that has two different audio tracks on it. Yeah, Lisa, you right. can click on one of those so they can see kind of how what that experience is like. I'm not sure if y'all be able to hear if it's coming through. No, nope. oh, it might it might not go through the stream. No. Yeah. Ah. Let me see if I can it, get it, my it, audio it, shared. Add. No, I can't share my uh, audio right now. It was playing for me. It sounded really awesome. All right, so and, we, but but we heard it, we heard it before. So and this can, is these yeah. tracks actually include Ryan. So I just got Ryan's, uh, I just got his collectible. Now I have a track that has Ryan in it. All right, what else is in the pack? So not not all packs contain the same assets, right? Right. Yeah, it can be a total mix. And hey, so it's completely hey, unique. Right Yay! <laughs> Love There's it. There's Josh. Okay, this is so cool to have just watched this whole video and seen all of you in action <laughs> now i i actually get to own some of these mm. so cool so only you own these packs right no one has a similar pack it's what's in the pack uh, yeah it's pretty mm. unlikely that somebody would get the exact same contents in the pack mm. and i have the serial numbers here so um, right. south island number 94 i'm the only one with that particular collectible and there's only huh. 150 of this collectible that were ever made. Huh. So this there's only online. 150 Josh. I feel so special. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till they start talking about Oh, that. okay. So here's here's a real like okay, this is this is the jack for me, this is the jackpot because I think that uh Trey's fractal and Annika's video were by far the most uh elaborate video pieces. Uh, so the fact that, uh, and, and so therefore I made lifeblood into four different, um, collectibles cause I didn't want it to be just one video. So there are four different collectibles for lifeblood. Uh, and this is one of them. Um, awesome. so it's, is this a piece of what we were just watching? Yes. Cool. And, and this, again, this is Ryan playing the trumpet, uh, on this. I, I think it is, I, I can't hear it, but. I think it is. But I got a ton of I got a ton of like Ryan in this pack overall. Yeah, you got the Ryan pack, and and at the same time, Ryan is not even here. I know we lost him. Um, yeah. But yeah, so there are four different lifeblood um, assets. I can't say NFTs anymore. Um, collectibles. Collectibles. Thank you. There are four different lifeblood collectibles. Um, and then, uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to do something special with, uh, Trey's, um, truth and gravity. Nice. Available in the and web store now. I think, uh, I have another, uh, record shop family member who wants to come on and, uh, rip their pack too. If everybody wants to see that. Let's see one more pack. Let's do it. All right, all right. Let me Trey, did you get here. Trey? Did you get a pack? Did you no, get one? I was too busy answering your question. Me, me too. I was too busy chatting. I I didn't know it would sell out in five minutes. It's crazy. We have to buy our stuff from Lisa now. <laughs> she's gonna up the cost. <laughs> and Lisa, Lisa just saw my house, so she's gonna <laughs> put it on the market for like right. twenty grand. <laughs> take advantage i had some pretty good serial numbers so they're pretty uh those will go for a bit so so what's the value of a serial number explain that the value of a serial number well it kind of all depends right um there it's yeah let me ex let me think of how to explain this best like when when the serial numbers are lower um that means you're closer to being kind of first minted um unless they're doing the random minting and uh it is mostly like the community that's driving that rarity and that interest in the lower number numbers um we also have our community really really likes getting the perfect serial so uh one of the cards i think was minted at 120 so if people want to get 120 or they want to get one and mostly it's just because gotcha. hey that's cool that i got the first one or hey it's cool i got the last one I don't like buying a like a like a limited edition print, right? Like, 
the one out of 500 or 5,000 or whatever is going to be a little different in terms of demand than 567 out of whatever. You know. It's just harder right. to get. It is potentially right. harder to get. And then, uh, oh yeah, I think, yeah, that's a great point from uh, the Reg there, the Reg, that what's really nice for you guys is that you can continue to make money when we're, when we are selling them off in the secondary market, not just off that first pack. I think that's what a lot of us, the fans, why we're coming on and why we're really excited is it's not that one time I'm just going to buy a CD or I'm just going to buy a record and that's the only kickback you would ever get. It's this continual um, knowing that we're supporting you. It's really exciting for us as fans. Like Coney, Coney is Coney is going to get royalty checks like seven years from now because of his video message in an NFT. <laughs> And he's like, wow. where is this where is this money coming from? And I'm like, well, remember you created a video message and people sold that for thousands of dollars? There you go. And considering how relatively rare these cards are, uh, that's not actually completely impossible. That, that's, it's entirely in the realm of possibility. Well, there yeah, you go. I did see uh, Coney's card from uh, before it was somebody was showing me the art on it uh, I, I think our fans are gonna I, like it i have to i have to tell the story of coney's card i have to tell the story <laughs> Please. of Coney's card. it, it okay, was it. it is great because uh so for a while i i chased all of you collaborators to to submit something and and th the collaborators who had a full-on artist spotlight they already submitted their content but then there were a few people who didn't have a full-on artist spotlight that i'm like i i need to have you know something that says like hi my name is right and um so for the longest time i didn't get anything from coney and and then he finally sent it to me and i literally played it in a loop like 20 times i was on the floor laughing really because come it on is that's so, true no it's true it's, it's true I, i'll bring my girlfriend in here like she she knows it was it because it was so funny it was so good um I, I'm just going to say it involves kittens. <laughs> Can I be I really that. honest again? Well, um, you know what? I, I have received all the email, uh, but unfortunately in that kind of period, I was uh, with my girlfriend around Europe traveling. So, <clears throat> so I had to read many, many emails. I knew about this kind of meeting and I was so happy to do it. But in the same times, I wasn't able to check like every day the emails so because the wi-fi connection was so bad you know i was in the north of europe east of europe so wi-fi you know it's, it was very hard to get it and uh, at the end uh, you know i received this the, your last message and you said coney it's very important to to have this kind of video and i said okay okay i i went to the <laughs> first first person that i've seen his he was from, I don't know, Ukraine, and we were in the middle of nowhere. And I have asked him, like, please, can I can I use your hotspot? You know, it's very important. You can't imagine. It's something that, you know, I have to save a life. <laughs> you know what? And uh, he was like, oh, like, what? Uh, you know, he didn't understand anything about what I was saying. So, and I was like, you know what? And I was showing him, please, is... And he gave to me the phone. He said, and after I, I got his phone and I found, I found a like dark room in, uh, in this uh, like nice hotel, but like very dark. And I took this, the first light and I said, okay, let's do it. And you know, I had 10 people in front of me. They were watching for me, like what he's doing what the fuck he's doing you know and i did that three times because you know my it's, english was good. so good so my girlfriend she was close to me she was like what the fuck are you doing and she said, Shh, i explain you later and after i was like Shh. and you know i send it to you and i was thinking maybe jesse he will see it and he will he will ask me what the fuck is this one well so so so, so to your point yes uh, i did not i did not think what the fuck is this but uh, some people in the record shop team definitely did think that. Um, so, so, so I submitted it, 
and uh and and i got an email from from one of the people who's in charge of the of, of all the coordinating the art stuff and they're like uh yeah i don't know about the coney thing i'm like no no i do know about the coney thing we definitely <laughs> need to have that like that is that's gonna be historic like piece of recording <laughs> like coney's coney's kittens seconds. the kittens of coney are going to be eternalized in this digital asset and 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 something tells me that the kittens of coney are going to be more <laughs> valuable than any of the other but, assets you, you, this, you know jesse this um this is is this italian word that you know nobody uses this but i like to call my friends like in italian is micione Michone is, uh, you know, my, 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 my close friends are something that I like to say, you know, maybe in English you say, hey, mate, but like in very sweet sense, you know, like Michone is like a real sweet cat, like a cat, uh, but it's like, okay. doesn't make any sense. But, you know, when you call your friend instead, Jesse, or instead, you know, hey, Michone. So I, I was saying, I have to find an English word to describe this, what I can do, okay sweet cats or i don't know and anyway so and i said okay let's do it i'm i, I like to be very like it, it's me in the bag Coney's, or in the, Coney's kittens are gonna Coney's kittens so. run the nft world that's a, it's that's a short story but funny story but i'm happy that maybe you 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 don't hate that that's it that's important yeah. it's great I'm, I'm gonna keep an eye out on uh on that particular nft um, any of you in the chat that want to say something before we go? I actually have one more person here to rip another pack. We've got Data Cult Audio who is doing our countdown for us. So thank you very much. We should be able to hear you. Can you just test your audio? Data Cult. Data Cult. Data Cult. I can't hear you. I got oh. your I got your screen up now. I see his. All right, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it in the mute, but we'll all okay. narrate for him. <laughs> we'll narrate. <laughs> this is actually this is one of our uh, record shop employees here as well, so we're excited to see what he gets. Of our support team members, appreciate your countdown. Oh, yay! There's, there's, there's Sam. <laughs> and I loved your story on this one where you had also all your fans come and film a similar video. It looked so awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was cool how that worked Hoover, out. hey, Canada. Good. Loved it, Sam. So that is, uh, I, I believe that is the full video, right? Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. Okay. Yep. All right. Let's see what else you got. Aaron really wants somebody to get Coney so we can see that video. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it should stay a mystery. <laughs> You've hyped it up so much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I already have three text messages on my phone asking Damn. me, sent me the Coney message. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I think it's like, no, I don't think it is completely random that uh, both of these packs seem to feature one artist yeah. more, than, more than others. That's awesome. It's a Sam pack. Oh, Sam pack. It's almost like it's live. <laughs> right. Same bag. <laughs> Your bangs even look the same. It's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Very meta. Nice. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Cult. One more. But, but but does he have Coney? That's <laughs> that's the <laughs> question. No Coney. <laughs> No, he doesn't have Coney. Awesome. That's very got cool. got Josh again. Um, Yay. <laughs> and uh, somebody wanted me to point out uh, what's been going on 
in the marketplace uh, since your pack has dropped. And um, so the initial price of the pack was $12. Now it's going for a resale on the market at $55 unopened with some, I, get, I mean, like they're all low cereals because the highest is 1000 um, So the packs themselves unopened. There's one uh, cereal, 150 It's up for $65. Now you're just the, talking like a Wall Street person. <laughs> I don't understand. I just bought one on the secondary market. I put Did a link you? in the chat if you guys want to see what it was. Okay. Ooh. Missed you. Oh, you, I think you put it in the private chat. Oh, so that yeah. was your intention. Hmm, I sent it to Jesse's um, WhatsApp too. I didn't oh. mean to send it. Oh, I'll, I'll uh, share my screen right. again because that's awesome. Ooh, you got the scum. Ooh, <laughs> rarity. This is what Trey just bought. You know, Trey, actually, what's great about your site compared to all the other marketplaces? I've, I'm on four different marketplaces, and it's so easy to buy because you can just buy with Google Pay. You don't have to connect your MetaMask wallet and do all this horseshit. It's easy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, Jesse. I own you. I own you now. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm glad that Record Shop made it so easy for people to own me. You, all you need is a credit card or PayPal, and you can own me. For pimps, man. But I can I can buy myself back, right? If I just pay a heavy premium. <laughs> you want to sell you back. This is a bit, a bit like human trafficking in a way. Yeah. Put it in like a fun way. Human hey, trafficking. Listen, I People are going to start talking about the scum frog, and they're they're going to be talking about your card. It's kind of weird. People talk about the OB all the time, and Discord, and they're talking about the card. It's it's really weird. Well, guys, um, I think we've lost Annika, um, but oh, there she is. Uh, thank you all so much for joining in this uh, in this chat. In my in my mind, it was going to be much longer. Uh, it really went by super quickly. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff we couldn't talk about uh, be just because we didn't have time. But uh, thank you so much for coming. And um, I uh, I don't know. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and people own me. <laughs> See how that goes. <laughs> thank you, Jesse. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Thank, thank you, man. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Call me Choni. <laughs> Bye, kittens. As, as always, I'm going to just get us uh, to raid another channel. So you all already are welcome to uh, pop off. Let me open up and see who we got here. He's also active. I think we want to get out and out and listen to some more music because that was so much fun. All right, so reminder to everybody watching to follow, uh, subscribe, all the good stuff. We are so happy to have everybody here today. And I think we're gonna go raid another DJ. I see DJ Sneak. All right, Sneak, do right, it. Sneak. Take, well, take awesome. us away, Sneak. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Guys. It'll take yeah. a few Bye, minutes. Coney. Bye. Thank you for staying up late, Coney. Thank Joshua. you so much. Thank you, know, you so much. Bye, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, guys. Love. Bye-bye.